Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call this meeting to order the mayor and board of commissioners for March 14th, 2023. We do want to apologize as our live stream, uh, we were having issues with our Zoom connectability. Uh, can I get the roll call, please? Commissioner Braun? Here. Mayor Marion? Here. Commissioner Warner? Here. Commissioner Pearson? Here. Will you rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you bow your heads with me for a brief prayer? Father God, I come to you tonight on behalf of the town of Rising Sun. God, I ask that you watch over our citizens. Be with us as we're here this evening. Watch over our first responders and our military, Lord. Be with us as we are here and as we leave. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. First on the agenda is consent agenda. Town Minister, do you have that? Uh, yes, you have that in front of you. Okay, I make a motion to approve the meeting, the minutes of 2 14 Just the consent agenda. Uh huh. You make, just make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mm, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Consent agenda passes. Town meetings. We have the town meetings at Tuesday, April the 11th, uh, Tuesday, May the 9th, Tuesday, June 13th, and Tuesday, July 11th. Does anyone see any issues with those town meetings? No, we just approved it. Okay. Moving forward into public presentations, our annual audit report. Town administrator, do you have that? Yes, I do. Um, what we have on, um, sorry, we're having another technical difficulty that the Microsoft Teams disappeared here. Okay, there we go. It's Internet Explorer okay, tonight, not so, Teams. Um, what we have on board is with uh, Stephen Rock and Kim Stank <coughs> from our um, auditing firm. Uh, we hired them. Uh, last year to take on responsibility of doing our audits. Um, the auditors that you guys remember from the past uh, basically got out of the business of these types of audits. So they essentially dropped us as, they dropped a lot of the municipal clients as uh, audit, uh, to be able to do their audits. So we have a new firm here, and I'm gonna slide them over so you can see the folks here. We have Stephen and Kim. Uh, guys, you are on, so people, you're on our big screen, so people at home can see you and the elected body can see you. So why don't you go ahead and go through the um, audit report. Hi, thanks for having us and thanks for hiring us. Um, as Calvin had indicated, um, we do do a lot of um, governments and nonprofits, both in Pennsylvania and in Maryland. So thank you for um, for working with us. And it has been a pleasure to work with Calvin and Judy. They have been both great. Um, you should have gotten two items. One was a letter, and that is to you as, as the council and governance of the town, as well as the financial statements. Um, the other thing that you did not receive, but it has been uploaded, is the UFR. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that governance letter, and Steve is going to talk about your financial statements. So in the letter, it is our letter to you. It talks about our responsibilities as your auditors. We are independent, and it also talks about your responsibilities. You are governance over the financial statements and are actually <coughs> responsible for those financial statements. Um, we did identify a couple of risks. Um, those risks are improper revenue recognition and improper re revenue recognition as well as management override of controls. Those two th risks are just general standard risks in any audit. So I like to point them out because a lot of times um, somebody will read that and say, oh my goodness, there are risks. Um, but that is just, it's just standard risk in every audit and we design our audit to mitigate those risks. Um, as we kind of go down that letter, we did implement uh, several GASBs this year, but no None of them actually had a significant impact on your statements. Um, we have identified some significant areas 
Um, there's no significant unusual transactions. We had no difficulties. Management has posted all adjustments that have been identified. Nothing has been significantly material. Um, and we did not have any significant findings, matters, or issues to, to address with you today. So um, that's kind of our letter to you. So everything was great. And Steve's going to kind of go into the financial statements as well and talk about our opinions on those financial statements. Um, so with the financial statements, um, beginning really on page one of the financial statements um, is our opinion to the financial statements. Um, first paragraph there, um, and it really, and really the first and second paragraph there offer our opinion. And overall, we gave a clean opinion for both the governmental and business types and each major fund of the uh, the town. Um, the remaining part of um, really like the independent auditor's report there, the first three pages, um, kind of goes into um, <clears throat> the responsibilities um, that both we as the auditors and that you as uh, and management then took on. Um, moving to page four, um, that's the management discussion <clears throat> analysis. Um, this is a, a good overview of the financial statements um, and provides explanation of change. Um, Calvin did a great job putting this together for you to kind of go through any major changes that there were in the financial statements this year. Um, to page 11, um, this would be your statement of that position. Um, this for the entire government provides an overview on a full accrual basis um, of your financial statements and includes your capital assets, um, and all real long-term liabilities along with your normal current assets and current liabilities that you would normally see on um, more of your fund level statements. Um, but uh, in the in total, um, there was about $7 million of assets, um, 3.6 million in liabilities, leaving a net position for your governmental activities of $3.3 million. Um, and then on the business type side, um, uh, total assets of about $26 million liabilities of 21.5 million um, ending in a difference of about 4.4 million dollars which is your net position for the business type activities <clears throat> um, really the only major change that we kind of noted this year um, would have been your unearned income um, increased um, by about 1.3 million dollars and this was a result as a result of uh, the ARPA money that you have um, in your restricted cash as of now um, going to page 12, um, this is a statement of activities and really shows like a change over the different types of um, governmental activities that you have um, with the revenues and expenditures. Um, but in the end, the change in net position um, for governmental activities this year um, was a decrease of about $200,000. And then for your business type activities was a decrease of about $700,000. Um, page 13 will be your balance sheet of governmental funds. So this is a general fund. Um, and like I said, whereas the statement of um, net position was full accrual, this is um, modified accrual basis, whereas you don't really have the really long-term um, aspects that you, like your capital assets and your uh, long-term debts. And it's more like a one-year kind of snapshot of all your assets and liabilities that you would have to use. Um, for the asset, in total, um, assets were about $3 million, liabilities of about $1.7 um, and then your total fund balance um, coming out to about $1.5 million. Um, and then to kind of see that change um, between the statement of net position and your balance sheet, um, page 14 shows you the, uh, all the differences between your two statements. Um, and then continuing to page 15, this really shows you um, your revenues and expenditures, again, more of on a, a one-year snapshot basis that kind of goes along with what you budget for, um, shows you the revenues of uh, 2.1 million expenditures of 2.4 uh, million um, other financing sources and uses were actually like a, a gain of revenue of about four hundred thousand uh, dollars ending in a positive change in that position of about two hundred thousand um, dollars during the year um, and then again page 16 shows you that difference um, between the statement um, of revenues and expenditures and uh, net position and then your uh, then your statement of um, <clears throat> statement of activities that was on page 12. Um, then I would like to kind of go on to the 
the notes to the financial statements, page 20 to 37, these kind of support everything that I kind of went over in your financial statements. Um, they kind of dig into the details of your capital assets, your long-term debts and things like that. Um, but then going to page uh, 38, this is your budget to actual schedule. And it shows your um, your uh, statement of revenues and expenditures and changes in that position as opposed to your budget that you had. Um, and it shows that in the end, total revenues um, were actually less than what were budgeted. Um, total expenditures overall were less than budget. Um, but then overall, it kind of shows that there's uh, other financing sources and uses ending to that positive change in that position that I uh, stated for the year. Um, and then the last portion of the report is page 39 and 40. And this is uh, our report on the internal controls. <coughs> Um, overall, we had, again, no findings, clean opinion on the internal controls, um, and um, everything seemed to be operating as designed. So overall, great audit, especially first year. It always takes a little longer, and it's a little more challenging the first year. And we thank Judy and Calvin for being patient with us because they actually did a lot to help us get through that. The other thing that I was that wanting I to talk to you a little bit about would be your um, ARPA money. It is sitting currently in the unearned revenue on your on both your balance sheet and and well, it's on your balance sheet. So um, something to think about. I don't know if you guys have have thought about how you're going to actually spend that those funds, um, and maybe we can sit down and talk about that and and how you can report those. Thank you, guys. Does anybody sure. have any Thank questions? You. Oh. Do you have any questions for us? We don't. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for doing this for us. Yep. And, and again, a huge thank you to Calvin and Judy for helping with uh, the annual audit report. <laughs> Moving forward into new business, resolution 2023-02, which is a fee schedule amendment for the small scale bulk water. Town Administrator, do you have that? Yes. <clears throat> this is a pretty straightforward resolution. Um, this is a resolution uh, that comes about because from time to time we get uh, either, there are typically private businesses that would like to purchase small scale bulk water from the town. It could be somebody who has a tanker truck that has a business where they go around and they fill um, pools. Um, we get people who have a tanker truck that go around and they clean out other tanks. Um, so they're looking to buy water from us, uh, not sewer, so it's not something that we're charging sewer. It would be something that we would hook them, have them hook up to a hydrant under supervision with a meter in place, and then we would charge them uh, for that. Um, if you want, I'll read the salient points of the resolution into the minutes. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, so this is resolution 2023-02, fee schedule amendment fees related to the small scale bulk purchase of water. Um, you have all the boilerplate stuff at the beginning. Uh, the one, two, three, four, uh, fifth line down, whereas the mayor and commissioners have received inquiries from private entities and private owners looking to purchase water in small scale bulk for the filling of swimming pools, landscaping, vehicles, tank, and other business uses. And whereas the mayor and commissioners wish to set up a program to accommodate those requests for small scale bulk water purchases uh, while properly reimbursing the town for the water consumption accommodations required and manpower needed to render those services. So basically this resolution is making a change to section six of the fee schedule titled, titled administrative fees. It's gonna add a new section eight, or H as in Harry. Um, you can see that on the screen here, highlighted. Here, you get down to the new section eight, and it says tanker truck and small scale bulk water purchase program 
The following charges will apply to anyone wishing to purchase small-scale bulk water from the town that is picked up using their own holding tank or by direct hose line approved by the town to the property. This can be a tank pulled on a trailer <coughs> or a truck or a tanker truck. The use of this water in the town limits must follow Chapter 13 of the codified ordinances of the Town of Rising Sun, titled Stormwater Management Code, Charges listed below are for each individual tank fill or use of water. So anyone who comes in and wants to uh, bulk purchase a thousand gallons or less is going to pay a flat charge of $125 for that thousand gallons or less. Anyone who wants to get a thousand to six thousand gallons would pay $250. Six thousand to ten thousand would pay $350. And water volume greater than ten thousand gallons would pay $500. I want to make it very clear, this is not changing the rates for our residents in the community. This is businesses that as they travel around the county, around the state, whatever they're doing and they need water, they want to buy that water from the town of Rising Sun. So these are specific charges for them, not for our residents who are, are, are using normal, everyday water. The other salient point here and at the beginning, we were talking to the uh, Boy Scouts about the stormwater management. We want to make sure that under our requirements of MS4, we need to regulate illegal discharges um, on the ground. So quite frankly, if somebody were cleaning a tractor trailer in the town of Rising Sun, they just can't clean that trailer out and have it dump out onto the, onto the ground without, you know, coming into MS4 compliance. So that's why we have the language in here that um, the use of this water and the town limits must follow Chapter 13 of the codified ordinances. That way we don't run into an MS4, the unintended consequence of us violating the state's uh, requirements on MS4. So that's what that resolution is about. Can I get a motion to approve Resolution 2023-DRT, which is the fee schedule amendment related to a small-scale bulk purchase of water? So moved. Second. <clears throat> um, Mayor, the one thing I wanted to do, I know uh, the town attorney had said to me that um, he was limited on uh, town er, on time. So I want to bring him back in and we might want to go to his report. Jay, are you still limited on time? No, I, I, have, I have plenty of time. I just okay. wanted to. All right. Somehow I got kicked out. I don't know what's going on, but I'm back. Okay. Well, hold on. We'll, we'll get to you in a second then. Sure. Okay. Resolution 2023-02 has a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Okay. I want to make it very clear that this isn't for the town resident who wants to fill their swimming pool off of a fire hydrant. This does not apply to them. Correct? We would put a meter on that and we essentially charge them the same thing we would charge on the water rate. Typically anymore, nobody's doing that. They're just running a garden hose from their house and then we just charge them for the water and not the sewer. Got it. So. All right. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. <clears throat> Thank you. Town Administrator, Ordinance uh, 2020. 3-02 stormwater management code update. Do you have that? Yes, I do. And so in this particular case, as you know, last month um, we uh, passed an ordinance that the town would take over stormwater management uh, oversight, plan review and oversight um, from the county when it deals with projects within the town of Rising Sun. Um, in discussions with MDE, they had asked us to make some changes, which are basically minor, to our ordinance. And in addition to that, I wanted to add some language that clarifies some, loop, uh, some loose ends uh, that could pop up as a result of us taking over from uh, the county. So the real salient points of this, if you'd like me to read those in to the minutes, so the salient points are the third whereas the town of Rising Sun is currently responsible for ensuring that all development occurring within the incorporated limits of the town are designed and constructed in a manner 
that is consistent with the State of Maryland stormwater management regulations pursuant to the environmental article, Title IV, Subtitle II, Annotated Code of Maryland, 2009 Replacement va uh, Volume. And whereas the Town of Rising Sun recently passed Ordinance 2301, which transferred the formal review and inspection of stormwater management projects within the incorporated Town of Rising Sun from the Cecil County Department of Public Works to the Town of Rising Sun. And whereas the town has received some comments from the Maryland Department of the Environment requesting a reordering of the required code sections, increase in fines and penalties for noncompliance, and the process for considering and granting of waivers and variances as provided for in, in Maryland stormwater management guidelines for state and federal projects. Whereas the changes also clarify responsibilities for the maintenance of stormwater management facilities, the structure of maintenance agreements, charges for inspection and transfer of performance guarantees of existing facilities under the purview of the Cecil County Public Works Department. Um, so this ordinance uh, is also set up to be adopted as an emergency ordinance, just like the previous one was. And real quickly, what I've done is I've, I've attached the entire 41 pages of the stormwater management ordinance, but the things that are being changed are highlighted in red or shown as strike through um, in, in the other areas. And where I'm looking here, I'm seeing that it, it's not showing the changes. You guys have the changes in red, but what's showing up here on the screen is not tracking correctly. So what I can tell you is that um, the Maryland, so here's what it is. We adopted, we had an existing, what's that? Yeah, well, we don't have any changes in red. So it, it, didn't, it didn't print out in red. So basically what's happening here is that the, <clears throat> that we had a stormwater management ordinance in place and Elkton had a stormwater management ordinance in place. And we adopted what they had, and we uh, updated what we had, and we used the state of Maryland's guideline on what model ordinances should look like. And even though we took some of the language that was in the guideline and put it in our ordinance without going into too much detail, MDE didn't want us to have that in the ordinance. So in order to make them relatively happy, we basically just made a reference that we would go to grant uh, waivers and variances based upon the state guidelines. I know it doesn't make sense, but it's just no, it makes sense. the way we're, MDE... We're codifying that we're following state law. Yes, it's essentially what it comes down to. And the way we had structured the ordinance <clears throat> before it all predates most of us, but we know that past boards and planning commissions especially had a problem with developers essentially selling a bag of goods. And they would go before elected officials and planning commission members that might not understand everything as well as the developer did, and they could be convinced that a waiver or a variance should be granted even though it did not meet the spirit of what the code was trying to achieve. The Maryland management guidelines talk about what that spirit and intent is. And even though we tried to put that in there, what I was trying to avoid was an elected body 10 years down the road granting a waiver simply because someone told them that, oh, this is something you can grant a waiver for. I wanted to give an elected body a guideline and a narrative of what the limitations of what they can grant a waiver for and what can't be granted for. So we're still achieving that by putting that in this document. The other item is that when a stormwater project is done, there are times when at the beginning of a project, Augie, you can remember this, in the previous land development projects, the developer would have to put forth 100% of the value of the stormwater, the sewer, the water, the street sidewalks yep. and everything. We had a problem because at that time, the town attorney many years ago was the developer. And so instead of putting 100% of what 
the letter of credit should be, he only had 10% listed. So we were not collecting enough of that money to offset any issues on these projects. In this particular case, the county requires 110%, but there can be projects that are still operating under those performance guarantees that are, when we do the transition, who's going to oversee the release of those funds and the way that is managed. So we basically redid the ordinance to make it clear that it would be done in the way the transition agreement is worked out between the town and Cecil County. And then when you, um, the other thing we needed to do is we will be enforcing the MS4 requirements going forward, which means all stormwater ponds and B, uh, BMPs need to be inspected by somebody. I don't know what the county currently charges an inspection fee for that, but we have it set up that we can charge an inspection fee for that. So we needed to write that into the ordinance. So that is, in a nutshell, the, these are minor tweaks just to make MD um, happy. And I apologize that it didn't uh, print out in red. Uh, like it was Can I get a motion to approve uh, ordinance number 2023-02 uh, um, emergency? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ordinance passes. <clears throat> Thank you, Town Administrator. Citizens input. Would anyone like to speak this evening? Anyone? Bueller. Moving forward into staff like reports. Um, the one I wanted to commend the Public Works Department, <clears throat> Judy and her staff, um, the demolition and uh, removal of the bad stuff in the church is essentially being completed, so um, a lot of all the rotted wood and material down in the downstairs areas ha um, has been corrected. The other thing we had um, pop-up that I wanted to talk to you about is if you remember about a month and a half ago we had a water main break in Maple Heights and right there at Broadleaf Court and there appeared to be a lot of substrate wash out under the blacktop and it was getting a little dicey because you could see the road concaving in for long stretches and we were getting preliminary estimates of upwards of at least thirty to sixty thousand dollars to basically rebuild the road because of the damage. Before we committed to that, we had Josh and the Public Works crew go in there and just pop off in certain areas of blacktop to see if it was just a void between the blacktop and the substrate that was causing it to sink, or whether or not all the substrate had washed out. It turns out that the substrate is fine. So by poking around, we will create a lot less heartache in terms of restoring that road. So we're gonna get it on, on the schedule to come in and do like a simple overlay in that area to get rid of the uh, depressions. We're also talking about a problem with that development, if you recall, it's the same problem we had in the Lion Drive development. It's the same developer who used connections and bolts that might not have been the best thing to be using. And the water main break that we had at, at Broadleaf Court was the same one we had about three years ago where they used regular steel bolts to hold the valve housing down and those steel bolts have rotted away. So essentially the top of the valve housing just comes off and all that water comes out under pressure and erodes the road. So while we're doing this, we're probably going to dig down to those valve boxes and change those fittings and bolts on them now uh, to do a little bit of preemptive uh, work to make sure that that uh, doesn't become a problem down the road. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you, Town Administrator. Chief? Uh, I have just a few things. Um, first, uh, I'm proud to say that uh, Cadet Moore will graduate on Friday, uh, the 17th. Um, he'll become Officer Moore. Uh, the preliminary reports that I've got on him from the Academy, that he's done very well. 
Um, he was in the top portion of his class, the top 10%. Um, I, I think that's great. Um, I, it also presents some issues with other agencies trying to steal him from us, but the young man's committed to Rising Sun. He lives here, wants to be here, and uh, he, he thinks he'll fit in great here, and I think he will do also. So he graduates on Friday uh, the 17th. Um, secondly, we did have a burglary at the Star Gas Mart approximately a week ago, uh, two weeks ago. Um, the gentleman that is responsible was arrested last Wednesday. Uh, he is from the Newark, the Newark Delaware area. Um, and we were not alone in being victimized by him. He had uh, successfully worked his way around uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and into Maryland before he was apprehended. Um, so uh, Newark PD was the lead agency that found him um, and took him into custody with uh, the help of Elkton. And he is going to be charged with that uh, burglary here in town. Um, lastly, the I'm, I'm looking for the perfect word to describe this, but the vehicles that we ordered back last May, June, um, I've checked on the progress. Typically by this point there has been a VIN number created. The only answer I'm getting right now is they've been ordered. I'm not sure when they will be coming in. Um, and we're getting close to the point where it's uh, um, all hands on deck but trying to find something because of the condition of the one vehicle we have that uh, Officer Moore would have to operate. Um, but. Thank goodness we have another two months to try to figure something out. So, um, that being the best news at the end, I guess, um, concludes my report unless there's some questions. Well, I have a, I have a question to Calvin. Now that uh, Mark Hyman's left uh, Ramsey and it's become Oarsman, do we have this, will we have the same type of relationship with Oarsman that we had with him? Or we don't know? That would be our intent. Yeah. Yes. That and the police vehicles have to come from one of the oh, approved state. Yeah. Yeah. So it won't matter. From there, my there's other, you know, I mean, vendors out there. Yeah. Um, Chevy just opened up a bid not long ago, and uh, I looked into that, but I'm quite sure it probably closed because the last time they opened their bid process, it was open for about 48 hours. Um, so, you know, Ford's probably looking to open again when they haven't fulfilled their bid from last year. Um, but there's there's other things that we can try to uh, help mitigate this problem with. All right. Town Attorney, do you have a report this evening? I do. Can you hear me? Wow. Whoa. A tie. Whoa. Holy mackerel. <laughs> I wanted to compete with your mayor, and he doesn't have one. Wait a minute. Wow. Three days ago, you, were, you had colors Weather. and were sitting in a nice... Motorcycle place. Uh, it's, it's I'm like Waldo. You never know where I'm going to be. <laughs> um, it's been a busy month, aside from all the things we uh, playing with on motorcycles. The town administrator and I are trying to wrap up a lot of the legal aspects of several of the projects um, that have been going on. So our favorite one is the Main Street project uh, for the tax issue. And as you know, we issued our 30-day letter to the county, and the county... Uh, did not respond in that 30 days. And so we are clear to move ahead and have our own tax sale. Sounds great. But we all knew that the county has to cooperate because they cannot take the property to tax sale at their tax sale if we have a tax sale before them. And our tax sale, if we did it right now, would occur sometime probably by the end of May and theirs would occur in June. So even though they didn't respond, we still have to find out what's going on. So Calvin and I have uh, reached out to uh, the county attorney and one of the county attorney's staff has now reached out to us and wants to discuss finalizing uh, an agreement. Uh, we haven't been able to talk about what that is. So it's still up in the air. Um, if we delay much longer, then it's just gonna be easier for the county to put it on their tax sale, use the numbers and go with it. But um, you know, it's disappointing that it didn't happen in the 30 day time period because we had everything planned for that 30 days. Uh, so that's where we are on that. 
uh, it can't go much more past the end of this fiscal year because we are going to have it sold one way or the other. The number is, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's over, it's close to a million dollars at this point in time in outstanding fees and things. So, uh, more delay, which you're not surprised with. Any questions on that issue? Okay. The second issue we've been working on uh, is really in the planning commission's area, but it deals with Stevens Preserve and uh, trying to work out their traffic issue. Um, and you're very familiar with what when we talked about the rezonings and the traffic issues because they wanted to come out, their traffic would come through town. And uh, Calvin had an excellent idea uh, months ago that perhaps they should try to come out on um, the highway there across from Martin's. And they would use property that you own to come out and have a major entrance through there. Uh, that is, everybody considers a brilliant idea for them, for us, for everything. Uh, there's several hiccups to that. One is, yes, you own that property, but right behind that property is property you don't own, which is the railroad bed, um, right? Things that have never been done in the past now come back to haunt us. So we're working on trying to make that piece happen. And of course, while we're doing that, we have the developer pushing us saying, you know, I want to do this yesterday. What will probably happen is the developer will, after Calvin and I kind of get all the facts in order, will be able to go to the planning commission and make their case saying, this is what we want to do. We would like to move the entrance as we've been asked. And uh, then they're going to ask the town to sign a, a MOU, which basically says, we know this will take several years. Will the town commit to grant us an easement across their land? Okay. so. There's nothing you have to commit to now. It's all in the thinking stage, but this does alleviate the traffic issue, supposedly. That's what we're having the experts look at. So I wanted you to know that so you're not surprised if you see it on a planning commission agenda. Uh, we want these this developer to go to the planning commission. That's where they need to hear all the facts, and uh, your liaison uh, can tell you what she hears when she's at the planning commission meeting and, and what just happened. So, that's going on. And then the other thing that's obviously going on is we're trying to finalize uh, the Southern States agreement and Calvin has really done the brunt of that work uh, in dealing with them and making it happen. So lots of agreements being read this month. Questions for me? No questions, Jay. Great. Well, it's great seeing you all. If you need anything, you know, you let me know. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jay. Moving forward into the mayor's report, my report is pretty brief this evening. Myself and uh, Chief Peterson visited with uh, our new governor, Wes Moore, uh, in Northeast. Uh, it was a uh, great opportunity to talk a little bit about the town of Rising Sun. We're looking forward to hosting him within the next couple of months. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to building a strong relationship with our state. Uh, moving forward into commissioner reports, uh, Commissioner Braun. Uh, the Planning Commission met on Thursday evening, March 9, to discuss a request from a Mr. T.J. Johnson, who owns 7.6 acre piece of property along Pierce Road in the area of the Bryan's Grace development. Mr. Johnson is requesting that the Planning Commission consider making an amendment to the town's comprehensive plan to change the designation of his property currently listed as Greenbelt to a zoning de designation that would allow him to construct five residential homes on the site. A green belt, belt designation is a comp plan is used to protect areas that are covered by forest areas and may also have natural features such as streams and steep slopes. After hearing Mr. Johnson's request and after careful deliberation, the Planning Commission did not feel it was in the best interest of the town to make this change in the comp plan. In other business, the Planning Commission heard a presentation from the town staff on recommended changes to the town zoning code to help mitigate traffic issues and parking in any future residential developments that come forward for review and consideration. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner Braun. Commissioner Pearson? No, no report. Commissioner Warnick? No report. All right. 
You can see on the agenda upcoming planning workshop meetings as well as our Board of Appeals upcoming town events and holidays as well as the trash recycling and yard waste schedule. Is there anything else to come before the board this evening? Hearing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Make a motion to adjourn. And it's been moved and seconded. seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.